What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. In this quick video review, I'm gonna go over the Thrustmaster TCA Officer Pack. I just wanted to do a quick video review of this product because I know a lot of you have been asking me for quite some time if I'm gonna get it, why haven't I got it yet? If you're a member of the channel, you probably heard on one of the podcasts that I put out every month or every couple of months that, uh, that I had a couple reservations about a couple of key flaws on this product, which I'll outline for you here in the video review process. Also the reason why I went ahead and picked up this product, which I wasn't going to do for quite a while but I decided to do it in the best interest of myself and of course for you guys give you some information here about this product on the market now one last thing is I want to make clear I am not sponsored by Thrustmaster and I think that's actually in the best interest of you the viewer sometimes being sponsored by a product can cause you to skew your information that you put out there just because of uh, whether it be agreements or anything like that so this is a full unbiased opinion that I'm going to give to you guys and I'm going to go into some details that you may or may not even care about and that's totally fine everybody's entitled to their own opinion so here is mine let's get at it we're going to start here with the thrust levers first a couple things I know Notice right away out of the package the levers themselves are actually pretty decently sized however the overall profile of the entire quadrant is significantly smaller uh, which is to be expected from the actual aircraft I'd say this uh, one little component here this uh, this section would be about the size of the throttle quadrant itself um, not to mention you know the start levers and the ignition start selector there now, a <clears throat> couple of things I noticed on the thrust levers that I'm not 100% sure I like. And by the touch, I mean, you can see if I just barely touch it here, you, you see how they flex? It's extremely delicate feeling. So I know in the real airplane, I like to rest my hand on the thrust levers and maintain that position uh, when below 2,000 feet. So in this particular setup here i feel like if i were to do that while flying my sim keep my hand on the thrust levers i feel over time it's actually going to cause wear and issues with the sensors underneath inside here because it just feels extremely delicate now of course that's just my observation only time will tell if that's true or not one other thing i want to mention here on the throttle or i keep saying throttle technically it's thrust levers but uh, i think they're the labels are throttle quadrant anyway one thing I want to take note is the direction of throw between idle and the Toga detent. Now the real aircraft has a significantly longer throw here with the thrust levers. From the idle detent to the first climb detent here is actually longer than from climb to the flex MCT detent in the real aircraft. Now from the flex MCT detent to Toga it is pretty much just like this here where it's just one step. but. The same with the real aircraft, there is actually a thrust available selection here between climb and flex MCT. The problem is that these distances are equidistant here on the Thrustmaster setup. This means when you're hand flying the aircraft with the auto thrust off, you have a very, very small range of motion where you're able to move the thrust levers, which can be extremely annoying coming from the real aircraft because your, your uh, movement to thrust ratio output is extremely skewed in the simulator here on your desktop. So that was one of the main reasons why I held off on buying this setup for a long time. All right, so the last thing here on the thrust levers is of course the reverse capability there to do the reverse detent. It is, uh, I guess anatomically correct to the real aircraft. However, again, there is a little bit more range of motion in the uh, idle reverse to full reverse moment there in the real airplane. But like I said, the range of throw on this thrust lever quadrant is probably the biggest drawback I see in my eyes. I would, if I were to guess, I would say that this entire range of motion from reverse all the way to the toga detent on this thrust lever quadrant is probably equal to that of just the idle to the first detent in the real airplane, which would be from here to here. So you could see how that is pretty significantly reduced um, from the real aircraft, which again, if you're not flying a real airplane, then you probably don't really care. You maybe even didn't know that. But for me, that's the major drawback to this setup, but I understand that they are trying to do it for size and make it a, a product that's available to purchase for a relatively uh, decent price for what you're getting. Again, the, only, the other second drawback I had is just, it, it feels like it's very delicate to me. And I could be totally wrong, it may last a really long time, but just by my initial feeling of the, of the piece of equipment here, it doesn't feel like it will last very long. 
but only time will tell when it comes to that. Now, I mean, I look at my honeycomb yolk setup and that feels like it's gonna last a very long time. I've had that now for over a year and it uh, hasn't done anything wrong. I haven't had any problems with it. So hopefully this will do the same. We can make an update video here in a little bit, uh, a little bit while longer. So now I wanna talk about why I actually purchased this thrust lever quadrant from Thrustmaster to use on my home simulator. And a lot has to do with the term muscle memory. So as you guys know, being a captain in the left seat of the aircraft, when you're going down the runway, you always wanna maintain your hand on the thrust levers until reaching the V1 speed. Once you reach the V1 speed, the hand is removed from the thrust lever quadrant, and that way if you have an engine failure or fire after V1, you don't have an instinct to come back and reject the takeoff when you already passed the V1 speed. Now, I ended up doing so much simming here in real life uh, that I, I almost felt that when I got back into the real airplane that I almost had a delayed muscle memory response whereas like I, I didn't want to put my hand on the thrust levers because I've been flying so much X-plane that I've been putting my left hand on the thrust levers because I have an X-52 or I'm sorry an X-56 setup that I've been using for quite some time and that alone just was a trigger in my head that said okay you know what I don't want to do any negative training anymore and that's kind of what I, I mean not, not that I'm training at home but when you continuously do something over and over if I'm making content or streaming you are training your muscles to make a movement and that's just one I didn't want to have to start regressing on if I were wasn't going to be flying very much now luckily I'm flying the line full-time again so it shouldn't really be an issue anyway but this will only reinforce what I already do in real life in the real aircraft by having the proper setup here with my right hand on the thrust lever quadrant. Now, <clears throat> real quick, let's talk about the other switches here on these on the uh, quadrant. They are pretty much as you expect off on switches. One biggest thing to note, which I'm sure everybody knows by now, is this is actually modeled to look almost correct. The only thing difference is in the real airplane, you have a gate. This is a gated switch here. When you move the engine start to off to on, you actually have to lift up on this switch to move it up over the gate and then into the on position. That's so you don't accidentally come down, reject a takeoff and bump the thrust lever, or I'm sorry, bump the off switch here on the uh, real aircraft. So. I haven't had that problem yet in the sim with this, but I could foresee somebody accidentally flipping that off real easy. That's the only minor detail there. Again, the size of these switches is extremely small compared to the real aircraft. I'd say probably about 50% scale, maybe a little bit, maybe, maybe they're like a 70% scale to the real airplane, but they are significantly smaller, which again is to be expected. I didn't buy this thing looking for a one-to-one -one replica of the Airbus Quadrant. Now, you do have two switches here that aren't there on the real airplane. Those are just the fire lights. If you do have an engine one or engine two fire, you will get that illuminated there. But that's gonna wrap up the thrust lever quadrant here from Thrustmaster. All right, so moving on now to the side stick. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here on the side stick. The main reason I purchased this entire officer pack combo was again to just prevent any negative training that I do at home. Again, negative training is a term that I use. I'm not really training at home, but just the negative muscle memory that can develop by using an opposite setup than you have in real life. Now, for the longest time, it really didn't bother me. And I actually felt it was good. It kept my, my skills good on both sides, sitting in the left seat or the right seat, should I ever need to sit seat support or something like that. But with COVID and with being, you know, on leave and not flying for a really long time and then just flying X-Plane all the time, I started to actually develop those muscle memory patterns backwards to what I needed in the real airplane. So again, that was the main reason I went up and purchased this setup here. So you guys know that I'm an advocate for the Thrustmaster Warthog side stick. And the reason why I really didn't get any peripherals for the Airbus for such a long time was because I was so in love with the Warthog side stick that I thought it felt, and I still do, think it feels the most accurate compared to a real Airbus side stick to this day. Uh, the only problem being again is it's only in a right-handed grip and if you want to be on the left-handed grip you need to have a left-handed setup and then you have to have a throttle on the right side so it just started to be, become uh, more of a nuisance than anything but looking at the side stick here from Air, the uh, Thrustmaster Airbus pack honestly it it's, uh, doesn't feel much different than say like a T1600M now, a couple of things that aren't anatomically correct are the uh, hat switch here on top. That's really not there in real life. This little roller ball isn't there in real life. Everything else is pretty much accurate. The only thing is I can't put my finger on it 100%, but I almost feel like 
it's missing something. Uh, maybe it's a little bit too thick up here on the head. It doesn't feel 100% like the real side stick, but again, that's not why I bought this setup. This was just kind of part of the pack, and I wanted to make a review of this and compare it to the real airplane because I get a lot of questions about is it worth it, is it realistic, etc. So other than that, I mean, it's a pretty decent side stick. I think it's going to last you a pretty long time if you uh, treat it right. It is all plastic. It seems like it's made out of the same material that the thrust levers are. However, it does feel a little bit more sturdy than, say, the thrust lever setup over there on that uh, throttle axis. Now, the way that the side stick moves, you can see it moves on the kind of a gimbal joint there. There's just a ball, and it rolls around inside there. It's the spring on this thing, it feels pretty stiff, and it feels like it almost wants to fight back too hard. The real Airbus side stick, you know, once you move it over, it will spring to center, but it actually comes back at a very nice slow pace. This this really wants to snap back on you. Um, so when you're making those, you know, if you're doing steep turn maneuvers or stall configuration or anything like that, doing anything training with this side stick, it may make it actually a little bit harder than it is in the real airplane. But of course, this is only a couple hundred dollars versus the several thousand dollars of the real Airbus side stick. Now, comparing this to the Thrustmaster Warthog stick, I will still take the Thrustmaster Warthog 10 times before I take this one, just because I still remain to this day that that setup on the Warthog just feels so realistic, it's hard to, it's hard to beat. If only it had an Airbus adapter grip to it, I think it would be the best Airbus product on the market because of the way that that side stick feels. It's made out of a nice metal component, whereas this right here is just, you know, that, that plastic. And you can tell, I mean, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to be mean, but I mean, you could tell it's just, it's cheap plastic material, but it should last you a decent amount of time as long as you don't use and abuse it. You have a couple extra buttons here. I'm not really into reviewing all that, but you do have that if you need more functionality. If you are getting this setup, just because it's gonna be your first HOTAS setup, I think you're gonna enjoy it. The only problem is if you wanna fly anything other than Airbus, this might start becoming an issue for you just because the Airbus is so specific and so unique in how its thrust levers are set up that if you're trying to fly a Boeing or a 727 or an MD-80, it may be a little bit of an issue for you. But other than that, I mean, if you fly FADEC aircraft, you know, like maybe the Embraer Phenom or something like that, it might actually work out pretty good for you. So that would be my only word of caution if you're purchasing this as your sole setup for flight simming in general is the throttle as far as the stick goes i think it's going to be a good product for the price point it's going to last you a long time but that's pretty much all i got i hope you guys enjoy this review i'll see you again here real soon